Hey guys, thanks for joining the Runners Flat. Going to talk to you about the Garmin 620. I've had this watch almost six months now. Let's go through the reasons I chose the 620. There's a lot of watches on the market right now. There's a lot of smart watches, watches that do a ton of stuff. For me, I was less worried about getting my emails during my runs or text messages or anything like that. I wasn't even so worried about the upload right away, although this automatically uploads to my phone, which then pushes it over to the Training Peak software that I use to log all my training, stuff like that. What I really like about the 620, besides the fact that this baby is like feather lightweight and it does a great job of sinking my heart rate and my GPS signal wickety split. This has a lot of analytical data that I can use to help me progress my training. So what's that mean? Basically, you know, all, all these companies now are starting to track satellite systems so that when you go in and you update this on your computer, as I do that, it's going to lock in those satellite positions for the next few days. So then when I go out the next morning to run, I turn it on, I hit sync, it's going to sync within a couple seconds. So really, really nice feature that Garmin's using that a lot of the companies are using as well. Besides that, the analytical data that I'm using is cadence, ground contact time, vertical oscillation, all these things where in conjunction with my heart rate really help me analyze the data and see what I can do to improve my running efficiency while I'm out there. So what's cadence? Cadence just how many steps I'm taking in a minute. What we know is that the quicker the cadence, the more hands doing the work, so to say, and I'm decreasing how much I'm pounding. I'm not overstriding and slamming in with my heel. I'm landing on the midfoot strike on my foot so that I'm efficient moving forward. I'm also pounding less on my body. With that cadence, one of the features that this has, which a lot of the watches do not, is ground contact. Ground contact time is another measurement that tells me how long my feet hit the ground and stay down there. The lower the ground contact time, the more I know that I'm getting off my feet efficiently and moving forward quickly. When the ground contact time is at a certain number or above, I know that I had kind of a sloppy run. Maybe I was tired, maybe it was the second half of a long run. And I need to be mindful of those things so that one, I don't pound myself more than I need to and end up getting hurt but also so that I can continue to work on how efficient I am and how strong my lower leg and my foot and ankle areas are so that I'm working on becoming a faster runner. Another thing then is vertical oscillation and that has to do with the heart rate strap being on, I can get that rise and fall. They also know that a lot of wasted energy can be if someone's really bouncy and so watching the vertical oscillation on a road run is definitely different than watching it on a trail run. If a trail run is uh, hilly, you'll see a lot more vertical oscillation in the data and knowing that I was on a trail run versus a road run, that helps me distinguish what information is more useful. This has a VO2 max indicator. That basically is set up so that it takes the pace that I'm running at the heart rate that I'm running with the data that I programmed into it with my age, my sex, my height, my weight, and it starts to give me a fitness level indicator. Keep in mind that that's a formula that they're using to give you an indicator of your VO2 max. It's, it's not a bad thing at all, but if I'm on a treadmill and I'm running uphill for 30 minutes to try to get ready for a trail race out in the mountains somewhere and my heart rate's high at a slower pace, the watch itself doesn't know that I'm running at an 8% incline or a 10% incline. And so it may adjust my VO2 max indicator and decrease it, meaning that I'm less fit because it doesn't know all the information. And so be real smart about that. With that and with the estimated pace feature on here for when you're indoor running on a treadmill, it's based on arm swing. And so what I found is I can dictate what that pace looks like on my treadmill with just moving my arms more or less. And so be careful of all those things, knowing that they're formulas that are used, but they're not exact formulas that are, are specific to you, and they're not gonna be 100% correct, okay? Heart rate strap, I use a strap because I'm still not quite ready to go to the wrist unit uh, for heart rate, although I think Garmin's making a lot of headway in progressing that feature so that uh, even on the elite level, you'll see guys that are gonna start to trust that wrist heart rate strap, which is really good because then you get rid of one other piece of uh, equipment that you have to use when you're trying to get that data. Another feature I really like with this is it actually has a recovery time suggestion at the end of your workout. So you go out and you run an hour and a half at a certain pace with a certain heart rate 
and what you get when you stop and you save that workout out is the watch will then all of a sudden it'll beep at me and it'll suggest how many hours of recovery I have and so it might say recovery time you know 18 hours well I know that that was an okay run but you know if I wanted to if I wanted to do a late afternoon run I could probably do a nice shakeout run and still kind of be in there where I'm recovered for the next day now on some of the long runs I've had or a faster two hour run on the weekend I might get back and we were cranking it might say you know 72 hours recovery if I did a crazy hard workout or or 48 hours recovery after a long run and that's something to take in mind it will help you train wisely because if you follow those features it'll remind you like hey you can run tomorrow but it's suggesting 48 hours before you do anything like you just did. You need to recover a little bit and have some recovery runs, but not necessarily a workout. This is a touchscreen unit, and touchscreen mean that everything on here works just like a touchscreen computer. And so once I got used to that, it was a really nice feature, really easy to use, and I can even touchscreen during the workout to go to different screens. One thing to be mindful of is that I had some other touchscreen watches previously. The sensitivity wasn't set up exactly the way possibly it should have been. And so when I was in the shower, you would see my watch flickering to different screens just from the water hitting it. And so this has been really good and I'm not accidentally changing screens during workouts. It, it works really well. Uh, lap features, interval features, uh, you can set up specific workouts, it connects to Garmin Connect. All those features are here and a lightweight setup that is a very technical watch. It's not a very techy watch, meaning you're not getting your text messages and stuff. Garmin has those watches, this is not it. The 620 is a watch that is going to help you build efficiency, track your data, and help you become a better, faster, stronger, you know, hopefully healthier runner and decrease your risk of injury. So if you're looking for a watch that has all that data, check out the 620 because it's a very helpful watch.